Hello everyone and welcome to my Soap's official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital spoilers for the week of April 1-5 to show that Sunny Corinthos will have a lot to think about after seeing Jason Morgan for the first time in two and a half years. Will Sunny accept Jason's explanation for his absence and recent moves? Although Jason has tried to safeguard Sonny, this may not be enough for the Mafia leader, who is now sensitive to betrayals. Sonny may believe Jason should have found a method to reach him and warn him about the issue. Whatever the situation, Sonny will have to determine how he feels about Ava Jerome now that the temptation between them has reached a breaking point. Ava and Sonny appear to be on the point of kissing or maybe hitting the sheets. But does Ava have a hidden agenda? Ava's interest in Sunny appears to be more than simply personal attraction, so keep an eye out for any schemes she may be working on behind the scenes. In the meanwhile, let us chat about Dante Falconeri, who will be up and attentive soon enough. Will Dante remember what occurred on the dock and tell everyone Jason didn't pull the trigger? Whether Dante recalls now or later, he will undoubtedly assist set the record straight sooner or later. That might influence the minds of some irate poor Charles locals who have been against Jason since he returned. Of course, Carly Spencer has never wavered in her support for Jason, and this tendency is set to continue. Nonetheless, Carly will struggle with some portions of Jason's tale and wish things had turned out differently. Nina Corinto's choice to rejoin Crimson may result in more difficulty than she bargained for. Drew Kane appeared a bit too eager to entice Mena back, so is he setting her up for another fall, or does he truly need her assistance to manage the magazine? Our GH predictions hint to drama in one form or another, but things might become sticky if Nina and Drew have to deal with some intricate flying sparks. According to General Hospital spoilers, the week of April 1-5 to will be filled with startling news and huge drama. So don't miss out. Jason is experiencing jail blues in the interview room of the PCPD. Chase phones Anna from the squad room, telling her she needs to go down to the station. Suddenly, Kate's appears. Chase and Kate's enter to meet Jason, who claims he's exercising his right to advice. Chase believes it is a ruse to get off because his lawyer is not present. Kate's informs Chase that he will handle the situation and sends him on his way. Alone, he questions Jason. What the heck are you doing here? Chase is outraged and concerned that Cates will offer Jason a bargain. Brooklyn asks what he requires. Chase wants to visit Dante, so they head to the hospital. Back in the questioning room, Cates questions why Jason brought himself in. Jason explains to establish that he did not shoot Dante. Kate lashes out. The evidence shows otherwise. Cates inquires about what occurred and Jason responds that he did everything as ordered with the other shooter on the roof, including ruining the shot, telling him that they didn't have time to take a second shot, and leaving the weapon behind. He claims they fled, but Donnie pursued, and Hamish shot Dante. Cates informs Jason that his cover had already been blown since Sonny was spotted visiting the warehouse while under video surveillance. Jason informs Cates that Hamish is no longer alive. Kate's insists him tell him everything that occurred before Anna arrives. Jason reveals that Hamish shot Dante, therefore he shot Hamish. He left his body where it was and believes the extraction crew hauled him away when they arrived looking for them. Kate's knows he phoned 911 to assist Dante, and he must have realized his voice would be recognized. Kate's questions why he didn't contact him and why he fled. Jason claims Dante saw him and identified him, so he contacted 911, and he couldn't return to the extraction crew since they'd know he shot Hamish. Cates again claims he should have phoned him. He asks where Jason went after the pier, and Jason mentions the footbridge. Cates confronts him, knowing he originally approached Carly. Jason claims he walked directly to the bridge, but Cates claims he was bleeding and that traces of his DNA will be found at Carly's if he searches her apartment again. Kate's reminds Jason that he pledged to collaborate, and this is not cooperation. 
Jason repeats that he traveled from the dock to the bridge. Kate's wonders why he went from the bridge. Jason did not believe Kate's would want Anna and the local police involved. Kate's wonders where he went after leaping, and who took care of him. He is aware that his gunshot wound has been sutured and inquires as to who aided him. Was Diane the one who planned things for him? He knows she has a history of letting crooks off the hook, but she'll need to be a magician to rescue him this time. Kate says that without a sniper to blame, he is on the hook. And if Donnie dies, he faces a capital murder charge and life in jail. Jason claims Dante is still alive and can recover. Kate's cautions him that he should hope Dunn does. He fumes that they spent two and a half years on this operation. They planted him inside this group, and now his cover has been exposed. He cautions Jason that if they don't acquire the information they're looking for, the FBI will use their leverage, something they both know he does not want. Trina arrives at Bobby's, and Joss is pleased to see her. Trina explains that she's come to meet someone else. Joss hasn't seen her since her breakup with Dex, and because Trina no longer lives in the dormitories, it's as if they're separated. She asks Trina where she has been. Trina said she simply assumed Joss needed space because she was going through a lot with Dex. Joss misses her buddy. But Trina says she isn't enjoyable to be around right now. Joss believes they can commiserate together. Trina admits she was keeping away because of Jason, who she knows is important to both her and her mother. Joss is perplexed. This is about Jason. Trina wonders whether it ever occurred to her that Jason may have shot her father. Joss claims Jason couldn't have since the Dunman was going for Sonny, whom he would never kill. Trina implies that she may not know Jason as well as she believes she does. Michael arrives to see Joss, and Trina departs to visit her Aunt Stella. Joss asks Michael what's going on. He claims to have news regarding Jason. He informs her that Jason has handed himself in and that the story will be widely publicized shortly. Joss thinks it's a comfort to know where he is and that he's alive, but if Donnie dies, Jason might face murder charges. They enter the kitchen and chat about Jason some more. Joss talked with their mother, who saw him but she stated she didn't spend much time with Jason before Anna and Kate's arrived. Joss inquires if Jason told Diane anything, but he responds that Diane just informed him that they discussed the accusations he faces. Diane, on the other hand, warned him not to get his hopes up that Jason would be granted bail, as the situation is deteriorating rapidly. Michael leaves to go chat to Willow. Outside, Stella encounters Trina. Trina believes they should cancel since she is not feeling up to being anywhere with anyone. Stella understands that she is dealing with loss and sadness, but the agony she feels will change in the coming weeks. Trina states that she doesn't know how she feels from one instant to the next and is generally numb. She experiences anguish and rage, but for the most part, it's like walking through thick fog. She can't taste what she's eating, doesn't care about lunch, and is simply going through the motions. Stella believes she is still in shock, and she wanted to meet her because she was frightened. Stella informs Trina that she doesn't have to suffer in quiet, and she shouldn't. Trina suggests they reschedule since she is not interested in discussing this. Stella claims her friends and family do not want her wandering around in discomfort. Trina sobs, perhaps because she does not want to move on from Spencer, whom she adored. Stella welcomes and understands. She believes that keeping onto the suffering will keep him alive. She claims Spencer loved her as well, and that he would not want his memory to be marred by grief or for her to suffer. Trina wonders what if his was the only great love of her life. Stella reminds Trina that she has her entire life ahead of her, and that she should focus on the present moment and be open to healing. Trina is unsure whether she can sense her fury is so overwhelming. Stella claims she no longer has anyone to blame for Esm's death. Stella assures her that the anger will pass, and it is difficult to live without closure because they were unable to give Spencer a decent funeral. According to her, a funeral brings loved ones together to support one another. Trina knows they offered Spencer a tribute, but it was insufficient. Stella proposes that she develop her own method of remembering and saying farewell. 
Stella goes into Bobby's, orders pie, and invites Joss to join her. Joss reveals she's worried about Trina and isn't sure how to be her friend right now. Stella thinks she's a great friend, but she'll have to allow Trina time to understand things without rushing her. Joss recalls Oscar's death and how everyone attempted to console her, but it didn't help. Stella claims Trina is strong and will find her way home. Trina goes to the cemetery and says, Hello, Spencer's grave. She can't even name him Spencer because he's not present, and the grave is merely a placeholder. She says she continues hoping to get a phone saying he made it ashore, that this was a nightmare, and that he is well. She understands it's bad for her to daydream about things that will never happen. She does, however, enjoy being by the ocean since it is relaxing and makes her feel closer to him. Even when it rains, he appears to be in the atmosphere, everywhere, but she feels as if she has vanished. She imagines being in Paris with him and spending their free time visiting museums, galleries, and bistros. She claims they go around Paris hand in hand, which is her ideal. But in reality, she is at Port Charles. She is not in school. She stays at home and works at the gallery. Even painting hurts, but it keeps her from missing him. She does not want to say goodbye to him, but she must try. She knows that if she doesn't, she too will sink. Liz can't locate her tablet in the hospital, but Willow gives it to her after finding it earlier. Willow admits to Liz that knowing Jason's back must be difficult for her family. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.